from LA Late Headquarters in Santa Monica, this is Afternoons LA Late. It's a big afternoon as stocks try to slightly rebound after the worst crash of the markets since June of 2020. And the latest details today is that the producer price index number was released before sunrise, featured live on air on mornings on this channel. And it came in as expected. But when you look at the component parts, it's much of what we saw yesterday with that core CPI. We'll go over why inflation was gotten right by you, members of the Purple Power community, over the last few months. And we'll go over what you and I are looking at right now in the month of September. Because remember, three months of benefits, three years of benefits, no, a lifetime of benefits is determined by three months of data. The number released in July, the number released yesterday, and the number being released in October based upon what we're doing right now. Milk and eggs, gasoline, we'll discuss it all in this big chat in this recording. Plus, the exciting details of massive stimulus. Massive stimulus, huge sums of money, $24,000 in three days and five days. We're gonna go over all this incredible stimulus done by the federal government. It's in every USA because it's federal stimulus. It's coming up in today's recording. Then we'll go back to the reaction to the massive implosion of the market yesterday. The stock's falling 1,100 points. Most stocks down 6% in just one day. And they're not up much today at all. They're up maybe a half a percentage point. The Dow and the NASDAQ relatively flat at the time of today's recording. And then we'll go over what you should see in the next few weeks. Plus, we'll have the reaction of the White House to the inflationary numbers released late yesterday. And why it took a little while for Wall Street to get the reaction into their system and crash the markets. Plus, we'll go over what the Federal Reserve is likely to do for the rest of this year. And why you and I, as part of the Purple Power community, have got things right. And why we'll continue to get it right for the rest of this year. Question mark, of course, is Wall Street. Are they ever going to come to their senses, or are they going to still misguide for the rest of this year? From the shores of Santa Monica, California, we've got a major recording for you today. Recession, inflation, your economy, your money. The breaking news starts right here, right now, as Afternoons kicks up its feet for September 14th, 2022. And it all starts right now. And good afternoon, everybody. I hope you have a beautiful day. It's September 14th, 2022, from the shores of Santa Monica, California, where it finally cooled off and staying cool for the rest of this year. We started today with the producer price index number release, this big, bold, beautiful Wednesday. And yesterday, of course, we had the CPI. Tomorrow, we have the retail sales. We also have the unemployment. And then on Friday, we have the major announcement for those consumer confidence numbers. So much hitting left and right, but let's go over where this money is landing and what the status of this U.S. economy is today. Hope you're having a beautiful day. Thank you for joining me. It's a big, bold, beautiful broadcast today, and the weather is gorgeous. Hope the weather is good where you are. And we have a lot of interactivity in this broadcast, so get ready to jump into the live chat with me. The start of the day began with the producer price index being released. The PPI is a sister or brother to the CPI, always released in conjunction. But it's a different number because it gauges the wholesaler. How much the wholesaler pays for those products, like the supermarket itself, not the consumer. And we were looking for a headline number, and we were looking for a core number, and they basically came in as expected. The producer price index for the month of August was released before Sunrise featured live on this channel when it debuted this morning and it came in 0.1% down. Not 1%, but 0.1%. So it's basically flat. Then when you look at the year to date increase, it's 8.7% compared to August of 2021. Moreover, when you exclude food and energy, the core PPI increased 0.2%. Then when you look at its its impact year-to-date compared to the month of July, the year-to-date in July was a rise of 
8%. The year-to-date rise for the month of August released this morning was 8.7%. The PPI is very different because it gauges how much the wholesaler is paying for the goods different than what you're paying for the goods. And so you and I don't own supermarkets, so we can't really gauge out this PPI before it's announced. But it really came in exactly as expected and is featured on this channel over the weekend. On September 11th, I told you that the producer price index prediction for today would be a 0.1 decrease and then a 0.3% increase for the core PPI, exactly as expected. Also coming in today and perhaps featured on evenings tonight will be the Mortgage Bankers Association Mortgage Purchase Application Index. Are mortgages going down? They are going down. This is an easy one across the board. You know there's three parts of these numbers. The third one is the retail sales, and that's always released with the CPI and PPI every month. That comes out tomorrow. I'll feature that on air Thursday morning along with the unemployment number live on air on mornings. Now, where are we right now? We are still digesting. We're still recuperating at least Wall Street is, not you and I, from that CPI being released yesterday, September 13th. This is the Consumer Price Index CPI. For the month of August, the CPI gauges inflation, more specifically the inflation that you endure as the consumer. Milk and eggs, gasoline, salaries, rent, those type of items. Going into yesterday's number, you and I had talked about this for a while. And you and I were interacting in the live chat, and I really got to celebrate you again. I got to congratulate you once again because you got this right. You got it right. And why did you get it right as the Purple Power community? Because you are the eyes and ears, the feet and the steps in the stores. You're in the stores. You're interacting with society. You see this, and you're all across the United States, and I interact with you in the live chat to get your input and see, do we see the same responses all across the country? Going into yesterday... Going into yesterday, we had discussed, do you see milk and eggs going down or higher? Viewers are basically saying the same or higher. Do you see rent the same or going higher? Viewers said the same thing, same or going higher. Salaries, we already knew that one. That was an easy one, going higher. And then we also discussed the gasoline. We really didn't see that gasoline going down that much. I'll have more about that in a second. So what did we say? as the Purple Power community going into yesterday's number. We expected the core CPI, which is the component parts, removing the gasoline, would go higher in the month of August than even Wall Street had said. And you got it right. You got it right. Congratulations. The Consumer Price Index released on September 13th, excluding food and energy, the core CPI, rose 0.6%. That was higher than expected. Again, they're expecting only... 8.3% core CPI increase and went up 0.6%. So you got it right. Let's look at the headline number. We also thought the headline number may be, high, may be better than Wall Street expecting. They're expecting a 0.1 decrease. Again, that's 0.1. We said higher. And what happened? It was a 0.1 increase, not a 0.1 decrease as Wall Street expected. What were the numbers we saw that came in in those core elements of the consumer price index number for the month of August yesterday. Salaries went up 0.2% in the month of August compared to the month of July. Then when we look at um, when we look at the energy prices, they fell 5% in the month, led by gasoline down 10.6%, but we had all we had all discussed this. It was offset. It was balanced against the food, which increased 0.8%, just a little bit under 1% in the month of August compared to the month of July. So food went up almost 1% in one month. Rent, which is also called shelter, we knew this was important because it's 30% of inflation. It did go up. It went up 0.7% from July to August, and it was up also 6.2% year to date. Now this was next this next one was one element we never discuss and I guess maybe we should have because it was a big shocker even for us. Medical care services. They are in the CPI. They are not in the PPI. 
it jumped dramatically. Again, nearly 1% in one month, up 0.8% compared to the month of July and 5.6% year to date. New cars and used cars, what happened compared July to August? Used cars fell, news car, new cars rose a lot, literally 1% in one month. Folks, this is enormous gains. 1% in this item, 1% in this item. These are enormous gains left and right. Here we are with the year-to-date numbers. Let's compare these numbers compared to August of 2021. Where are the biggest gains in one year? Gasoline, 26% off. Airline fares, 34, 33% off. Electricity, up 60%. And then the numbers under 10% raises are rent, medical, apparel, and new car vehicles coming right at 10%. Wow. Now, I want you to jump in the live chat with me right now because I want to interact with the subject matter that we're dealing with at the very moment. We're in the month of September, but I want you to give me indication of what you're seeing going on right now this month. So I'm specifically asking, what do you see in September this month that we're in right now compared to the prior month of August? Here we go. Get ready to answer. Up, down, the same. Do you see the milk the same or up or down? I see the milk basically about the same or a little bit down. Jump in the live chat. What do you see for the milk? Now, the eggs, different story. I see the eggs up compared to the prior month. I see the eggs higher this month of September compared to August. What do you see? The yogurt and some other dairy products, they're up a lot. I think they're up an enormous amount compared to the month of July. What do you see for dairy, the other dairy? Next, salaries. Now, this is an easy one. <laughs> I'm going to ask you, but I can also give you a back on, background on it. Do you see the salaries the same or going up? This is easy. Obviously, it's the same or going up. It's not going down. No one's cutting anyone's salaries. But we also have an easy one on this one. The non-farm payroll numbers that are released once a month were released about two weeks ago. It showed that salaries went up about 0.3% in one month. And that is consistent with what we had uh, released yesterday for August. Do you see salaries going up? I do. I really do. Then rent. Oh, boy. Remember, rent is 30% of inflation. Do you see the rent going down? Of course not. Occupancy is at 100% practically across the United States for rent for residential apartments. So do you see any landlord cutting rent? No, not happening. Uh, and there you go. There you go. Now let's go over to gasoline. This is where it gets really interesting. Gasoline. Do you see the gasoline going down? Or do you see it going up? Or do you see it about the same? I see it about the same, folks, and I've been discussing this with you for a while. I am not buying into the strip away national average. I don't buy it. I really don't buy it. I'll go over with you in a second, but I asked this question yesterday and asked the question the day before. Do you see gasoline still four, five, six dollars? And I have viewers all across the country in the live chat saying, I am not seeing three dollars. I am never seeing three dollars anywhere. Do you see three dollars anywhere? And if you do, tell me what your state you're in. Because I have people on the East Coast, I have people in the Northwest, I have people in the Southwest. No one is seeing the $3. Everyone is still seeing 4 5 6 So we'll have more about that in just a second. Now, this is big. Why did I just go over this with you? Because your benefits. Your benefits are tied and dependent upon three months of data. And the third and final month is this month. And here you go. This is why you can predict inflation better than anyone on Wall Street, because you just did. Let me show you why. Inflation that you're seeing in the stores, in the, in the markets, and in the pump right now in the month of September will not go down at all this month. Because the Federal Reserve is not meeting for another two weeks. And whatever they do will not impact the markets for several weeks to come. So there you go. The Federal Reserve did not meet in the month of August. They're off in the month of August. And when they meet the month of September, we're halfway through the month. And whatever they do, it will not, in fact, impact those product prices at all. So this is critical. What you're saying, seeing and saying, seeing and saying, for those prices of goods right now in September is likely the best indication 
as part of the Purple Power community, of where inflation is in September. And you can take that number to the bank and cash it because that is real great data that you're delivering because the Federal Reserve will not be able to touch it and will not be able to impact it in the 14 days left in the month of September. It's just not enough time. So this is big. Now let's bring it back to your benefits. A lifetime stimulus. A lifetime stimulus. This is absolutely incredible. Your benefits are going to go up a lot because they're dependent upon three months of data. And we have now had two of three months. And we just went over the third together. Your benefits are determined based upon a July, August, and September's data. The July data was released in the month of August, August uh, 10th. And that number was about an 8.5. The component parts were uh, relatively higher. The August data was released yesterday, yesterday, September 13th. And then the September data is being released on around October 13th. But you and I don't have to live through that wait because guess what? You and I will interact on this channel daily in the live chat and discuss these product prices because that is the September data before waiting to October 10th. That September data, you and I need to see it universally impacted the same way across the country in the live chat. If we see people in New England, people in the in Southeast, all seeing the same increases, then there you go. That's the data. Now let's jump into what's going on. It's what I call on this channel, lifetime stimulus. Why? Because once your benefits go up, they never go down. If your inflation is so high that it raises your benefits up 11% this year, that means your benefits will go up 11% a lifetime. Not just this year, not just next year, but lifetime. And if inflation is still 2% next year, then you'll get another lift on top of that. Who is this? You, if you're on SSI, SSDI, Social Security, Railroad Benefits, Veterans Benefits. $5,000 is coming to some of you this year. Excuse me, next year, some of you more, some of you less. You'll all get the same raise. But over a lifetime, this will be thousands of dollars to most viewers of this channel. Thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars over a lifetime. Let's go over why and how and what is going to happen. Your benefits are tied to something called COLA, Cost of Living Adjustment. And it's determined by three months of data, which we just went over, July, August, and September. If those numbers basically stay the same, then your benefits are going to go up a lot, not just a little bit, a lifetime. This is absolutely incredible. And, you know, every time I get to this part of this recording, I get a little emotional. Why? Because this is everything you ever wanted for on this channel. We discussed this during the presidential run for office, during the primaries, when Liz Warren was trying to get the Democratic nomination, said she wants to give you $200 a month for 12 months. That's $2,400. When Joe Biden said, I'll adopt her policy, I'll do $1,200, 12 months of $200 checks, just 12 checks. And then we talked about, well, we want to get Biden to swap color for inflation uh, because we want that to happen before inflation has gotten down by Jay Powell and the Federal Reserve. And then last year, in 2021, I was the only financial broadcaster to report and predict that the U.S. economy would suffer an 8% inflation in December 2021. People thought I was crazy. I was right. And then I said that the, that the Federal Reserve was not going to get inflation down whatsoever, that that 8% inflation was going to be with us for a long time. I ran the quotes from Jay Powell. That word transitory is now not aging well of history because that quote from Jay Powell, that inflation was going to be temporary or transitory, looks ridiculous. And I said he wasn't going to get down. Nine months in, they haven't moved it at all. And all throughout this year, I was deeply worried for you. I didn't want Jay Powell to get inflation down before they lock it into your benefits. And now it's happening. This is absolutely incredible great news. July has happened. August has happened. And now we're experiencing September. And there's nothing that Jay Powell is going to be able to do to impact September because they meet too late in the month of September for that FOMC meeting at the Federal Reserve. So how much your benefits are going to go up? Let me go over the projections. Let me go over the analysis. I'll have more about this, hopefully, at evenings across the board. When that July data was released last month on August 10th, the Seniors League, which is a nonprofit organization, looking at that headline CPI, which is lower than yesterday's number, lower, said that they're projecting your benefits to go up 
10.1%. What am I projecting? Based upon yesterday's number, if it stays the same, I'm projecting your benefits to go up about 11% to 12%, not just this year, remember, but lifetime. This is absolutely incredible. I'm so excited for you. I really, really am excited for you. This is everything we've always chatted about on this channel, and this is reality. SSI, SSDI, Social Security, Royal Babbitts, it's really happening. It's the law, and it's just, it's just heartwarming. Now, there are other parts of this economy that will not feel heartwarmed by inflation. They're going to feel choked by inflation. And when you go over those parts of the economy, they're going to get choked very badly by the inflation and get choked very badly by those raises from the Federal Reserve. Two different parts of this economy. But first, I want to leave with a quote from Joe Biden that came in late yesterday. I did not feature it on this channel then because I was done recording. The comment came in from Joe Biden at the close of the markets yesterday when asked the president whether he was worried about the inflation numbers released yesterday for September 13th. He said, no, I am not worried because we're only talking about one-tenth of one percent. I think that's one of the most ridiculous quotes I've ran on this channel for a long time. Why? He's not worried about inflation for the month of August released yesterday because it's only a one one percentage point inc a point one percent increase. Well, yeah, but we're not dealing with just one month of data. Are you worried about the year in year to date data? <laughs> He was asked a question about inflation in the U.S. economy, and he said, I'm not worried about how much it moved in four weeks. Well, where was the reporter? The reporter should have gone in and said, I have a follow-up question. Are you worried about the year-to-date changes, not the four-week changes? Here are the year-to-date changes, 26% up, 33% up, 16% up. Yeah, I, he clearly took the question and ran it as, I'm not worried about four weeks of changes. Well, how about 12 months of changes? He also said, stock market, stock market doesn't necessarily reflect the state of the U.S. economy, as you well know. Uh, no, it does. <laughs> and the economy is still strong. No, it's not. It's in a recession. Unemployment's low. Well, not really. It's coming back up. Jobs are up. No, they're down. The job creation number last week was actually one of the lowest job creations number we've had in a long time. Remember, it used to be uh, 500,000, I think, in July. It was only two. 200, 300,000 jobs created in the month of August. I mean, this data is just wrong, wrong, wrong. Manufacturing is good. He's correct on that. Manufacturing is good. I think we're going to be fine. Well, it's nice to be optimistic, but the data he's signing is all wrong data. Now, the parts of the economy, they're going to really badly get suffer, get hurt by all this inflation and all these interest rate spikes are the following. First, the stock market suffered its largest crash in one day yesterday, September 13th, since uh, 2020. It's the largest single crash since 2020. But more importantly, here's what you need to know. Stocks are now at the lowest lows since May of this year. And in many cases, a year to date at the, uh, are not at year to date lows, they're at 52 week lows. Moreover, What's important to understand is that all that fake narrative that came out of Wall Street over the last few months really came back to bite them, but I think they still don't get it. Here, again, is where I'm going to celebrate you. I'm going to applaud you because we discussed this and we understood this. One, we understood that inflation was still here and not gone away. Wall Street didn't. Number two, we understood that j Powell and the Federal Reserve is going to raise those interest rate spikes throughout the rest of this year into next year because inflation is still not down. Wall Street didn't get that. And every time that Wall Street doesn't listen or ignores it or doesn't comprehend it, Wall Street crashes. It last happened when j Powell spoke at the Jackson Hall conference three weeks ago. And he said, I have a lot of interest rate spikes to happen. Wall Street crashed. That's why Wall Street crashed yesterday. You know what I said yesterday about the crash? You know what I say about today about the crash? They deserve it. Wall Street deserves their stocks to crash because everyone told them what was going on and they ignored it. They absolutely ignored it. Now, here's what you need to know is that the markets will continue to crash for as long as they continue to not embed the risk of what Jay Powell and co. are going to do at the Federal Reserve. Continual. At the time of today's recording for September 14th, I got to tell you, 
it's not much different than it was yes than two days ago two days ago before the markets crash this was the comment by on september 12th uh i'm about to sneeze because it's allergic i'm allergic to this um nonsense sound <laughs> i'm allergic to nonsense are you allergic to nonsense there's fun all the time on the show i'm allergic to nonsense i was about to sneeze out the nonsense around me from wall street i wanted to turn off the sounds so you didn't hear it uh seema shaw the day before the market said so, the day before the markets crashed on september 13th he said this on september 12th that he believes that wall street is back to reality I said no that day. I said no, they're not. They're back to understanding there'll be one interest rate spike from the Federal Reserve in September. And they think we're done with this. They think the inflation's gone. They think that the Federal Reserve is done. And that was what I said on September 12th. You and I all discussed this. We did not think that the Federal that the Wall Street had absorbed the reality check. After the markets crashed yesterday, then we had a reaction to that news. And that comment came in yesterday from a brilliant analyst. And Morgan Stanley. And what did he say? He said that wishful expectations uh, may have been a little bit premature. That's from Mike Lowengarth. Premature? Uh, I think, again, that's window dressing. Here is what you need to know. Federal Reserve now has the same, in the same inflation, basically, that they had in January. They've had nine interest rate spikes in nine months. Well, let's take it back. They didn't meet in, in August. So they've had seven interest rate spikes in nine months. How much have they got in inflation down? They haven't even gotten down 1%. They need to get it to 2%. They're 6% away. They haven't moved it at all in seven months, in nine months. So where do I project out them doing this? I'm projecting the Federal Reserve will have a 75 basis point in September, in October, in November, and in December. And I'm the only financial broadcaster reporting that as a prediction. I was the only one to say that September would be 75 basis point several weeks ago. Now everyone agrees it's 75 in September. But they think Federal Reserve is done after September. No. I'm saying 75 for the whole rest of this year. Then I'm projecting that interest rate spikes will continue throughout much of the first half of next year. Maybe a little bit less than 75 basis point. Wall Street does not even have that embedded. Now why am I able to say this? Because Jay Powell and all the other Fed governors have said the same thing. They've all said they have to get inflation to 2% and they'll continue to spike that interest rate until they get it to 2%. And who is going to get hurt by this? Number one, anyone that has adjustable rate debt. Number two, anyone that doesn't get their stimulus checks right now. Anyone who doesn't get these stimulus checks. Anyone who just sits around just says, hey, you know, it's good times here to stay. I'm going to run up that credit card debt. I'm going to go out and celebrate and just have a lot of fun. And then they realize, oh boy, I should have gotten those stimulus checks when they were around. There is massive stimulus checks now available. And those massive stimulus checks now available are huge. $24,000 in four days, $20,000 in five days, massive stimulus checks available across the board. Let's go over those stimulus checks right now, and then we'll go back into the hurt that's going to be felt by parts of this economy that have not understood the reality of the situation. Those big sums of money right now are huge. The first three checks by, were done by the President of the United States by executive action. In the month of March, those incredible checks are three, are three checks, A, B, and C, that amount to $100,000. Yes, I call them checks A, B, and C, passed by executive action of Joseph Biden in the month of March. Viewers have gotten ever since. Checks A, B, and C, about $100,000. You qualify. Single individual, $75,000 less, go get it. Married couple, $150,000 less, go get it. If you're on benefits, go get it. If you're on SSI, SSDI, go get it. Rent, own, young, old. This is federal stimulus. It's not coming from your states. It's not being paid out by the states. It's coming from the federal government. Those were the first three checks. Then, Congress met about four weeks ago, passed a bill, and that established seven new categories of checks thereafter, E through K. Then, over the weeks that followed after that, I found you other checks, L and M, N and O, P and Q. Those incredible checks now amount to 300 checks, 
of about $300,000. You want to get them. How do you get them? You go into this video, join the channel. You join this channel. Then you get the membership newsletter delivered from me to you as a member Monday through Friday, 7 p.m. Pacific Standard Time via the YouTube alerts for members. You go right into that membership newsletter and apply for check A, B, C, and all the way to Q. You become part of this membership community, the Purple Power, and you get these huge checks in the big second half. We're going to go over all these incredible checks. Plus, we'll go over what's going on with this economy, what's going on with the Federal Reserve, and why the situation is going to go from bad to worse. Plus, we'll be looking at what's going on with the housing market and the latest implosion. Plus, we'll be looking at where this market is going. We're just getting started. Your unemployment, your stimulus, your economy, that and more coming up in the big second half. I'll see you back in 60 seconds as the breaking news continues this day for a big afternoons. If you want money right now, not five days from now and not five weeks from now, then reach out to the community page. The volunteers can help you find that money for rent and utilities. That's at news.la.com forward slash community. The community page features a series of volunteers who are viewers like you. They can help you find rent, utilities, SNAP, food benefits, mortgage assistance, and help you with eviction moratorium questions as well. Their Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram individuals reach out to them and indicate the city and state you're from, and they'll get back to you shortly. That's a community page. Volunteers working for you, viewers helping one another. Stay with LA for more. Join LA Late Daily for the excitement of the new LA Late Live Daily. The excitement starts on mornings LA Late at 9 a.m. LLA returns at 11 a.m. daily. And then afternoons LLA at 1 p.m. Join us daily as the excitement continues live from Santa Monica on LLA. And the excitement continues on a big, bold, beautiful September 14th, 2022 from the shores of Santa Monica, California. Join me tonight, of course, at 5 o'clock Pacific Standard Time. That's 8 o'clock Eastern Standard Time for a breaking news report on evenings. You don't want to miss that across the board. The continuing coverage continues right now on a big afternoon. We're going to be going over your stimulus. Of course, the economy, the recession, the inflation, your benefit raise. Your housing market and your unemployment. The fourth stimulus starts right now on the big second half. Thank you for joining me on LA Late with the breaking news today. Hope you're having a great day. It cooled down a lot here, and thank goodness we are done with the heat. Thank you for the great comments about the flowers. You know, um, we were having a lot of fun on the live chat yesterday talking about the flowers because I have never had red flowers on set. Do you notice that? Never had red flowers. Uh, and I don't know why. Uh, I, I always thought maybe you would get it would get bleached out or you couldn't tell the coloring of it in the background. But I'm loving it uh, and I'm loving all of them. I had gotten the flowers uh, several days ago but did not bring them on set because there was such a bad heat wave and the heat wave was just killing everything. So I kept them in a cool, dark place and waited till it got cooler and I'm glad I did. So thank you for the great comments about all the flowers. Yes, they're all real. Let's go into this incredible stimulus. Massive stimulus in 20,000 in three days, 24,000 in five days. It's enormous stimulus across the board. What's going on? There's lots of stimulus. One, you go onto this video, become a member. Purple Hawk, Purple Power, Castino VIP. Become a member of LA1, the channel you may be watching right now. LA2 or LA3, any of the three channels in this broadcasting network family. Then get that membership newsletter delivered to you via YouTube alerts exactly on the money at 7 o'clock Pacific Standard Time, which is 9 o'clock Central, 10 o'clock Eastern Standard Time. And go right in and start applying for these checks. What are the checks? The first three checks passed by the President of the United States by executive action are A, B, and C. 
And they're huge. Check A is the wonderful money for weatherizing. This is the money that Spelly got, just huge sums of money. Check B is the check that the view out of Florida, Frank Mancuso got. He just got incredible sums of money. Let's look at his success story. Look at the, what he got. He got 18 months of mortgage plus 18 months of utilities, 18 months of high speed. We had another view out of Florida for check B. She got 80 to 100 checks from check B. It's just absolutely incredible. And this is in the newsletter right after check A, obviously. You go down to check B and go right and apply. Then, uh, how many checks are in check B? About 80 to 100 checks. Check C, right after that, has been on this channel for a very long time. It predates, you know, fourth stimulus, predates third stimulus. It's for rent, utilities, mortgage, assistance, and more. You go down the membership newsletter, it tells you who to call, what to say, and how to say it. This is 80 to 100 checks. But I got 12 places for you to call to get this money in the membership newsletter at Check C. Those are the first three checks. And the success stories for Check C's have been on this channel for a long time. This channel has gotten people $50 million since its launch, and a lot of it has been from Check C. Look at this money for rent, $30,000. Look at this money for utilities. Lynn Glenn got 12 months of utilities a few days ago. Another view got 12 months. Two viewers got 14 months of rent. In the just a few days ago, here's Snap. Mark's brother in law is getting a quarter million dollars over 10 years. Mark, who was here at 32,000, he went from this graphic to this graphic. Now he's at 166,000. If you think Mark's a rarity, he's not. Uh, we have Dragon, who got $145,000 just a few days ago. We have Johnny, who helped. Can I remember the number? Johnny himself got 80,000. His two family members each got 50,000, but then he helped his neighbors. I think it was 20 people who got them nearly um, three quarters of a million dollars. It's just incredible. It was a lot of people. It was not just two people. And then here's Lorraine. She was at 105. She went to 155. That is all the success stories from A through C. Now, Congress then came in about three weeks ago, four weeks ago, passed a bill, and that established checks E through K. Incredible. They are all together in the membership newsletter. And then over the last few weeks, I found you L and M, N and O, P and Q. They're all lower in the membership newsletter. Go down, apply. Go down, apply. Click, click, click. Very, very straightforward. The biggest payout of a single check. Well, that is over $100,000. There's a $100,000 check in there. The smallest check, I always think, I don't think there's a check less than 8000 It may be even more than that. I don't, it, it, there's no $100 check on this channel at all. Absolutely not. The fastest paying check. I mean, we have checks in three days. The It's just enormous sums of money. It's just really incredible. You become a member. You get the membership newsletter. You go down and apply check A all the way to Q. 14 categories, 300 plus checks, $300,000 possible across the board for you to get. It's just absolutely incredible. And with that, let's go right back into the breaking news that you need to know across the land. The other story that really is so important is where this economy is and why you as a family have learned so well. We have been showing this graphic on this channel for a very long time. Yes, the phase is the economy. And I would refer to phase two as the financial cliff. That financial cliff is certainly underway in some parts of the economy, but I really do believe that the real hurt will be felt in January. The hurt is being felt right now in several parts of the economy, and I got to tell you, it's going to get worse. Housing. Housing is example of how bad bad is going to get because it's just started. Housing has been hurt by those interest rate spikes from Jay Powell, hurt by the recession, but it's going to get hurt a lot worse. Here again is my projection for what the Federal Reserve is going to do. An interest rate spike for all the rest of this year for September, October, November, December. That's four months. And then interest rate spikes all next year. The 30-year fixed mortgage rate rose from 3% last year to 6% with just the interest rate spikes from J-PAL from early this year into July. Imagine what that mortgage rate is going to be for the rest of this year. It's going to 7%. No one is able to afford a home at a 6% mortgage. Do you think they're going to be able to afford a home at a 7% mortgage? No. So if you are exposed to the following 
industries, the following people, or the following groups. Prepare accordingly. First, are you exposed to anyone around you who has debt where the rate is variable? Then prepare accordingly. It may be you work at a small business that has only the boss and the boss owns the business. But the boss bought all the furniture on debt. The boss has all the merchandise delivered on credit. And the boss won't be able to afford that debt coming into later this year. Are you a person who has a friend or neighbor who has a car loan and the debt is variable? Are you a person in the, in the real estate industry that anything is impacted by fluctuations of the markets? Well, you got to prepare accordingly because this is what's going to happen. Housing. Housing market is going to get a lot worse than it is right now. The median average home price in America is down 14% now compared to 2021. The median average home price sold in the United States is now down 40% compared to what it was in 2019. It has a long way to go down because of all those interest rate spikes across the board coming up later this year. The price of homes on the market are not selling. And now 20% of sellers have to cut the price of the home. That's now. Imagine what they're going to have to do. Imagine the percentage of what it's going to be by the end of this year. Yeah, you can see 40% cutting the price of the home because that mortgage rate is going to kill the home industry. If you have a home and you have to sell it, get out of the home now. If you want to buy a home, buy the home right now. Don't wait because you won't be able to afford the higher mortgage rate. You won't be able to sell the home with the higher mortgage rates. You won't have buyers. Let's go over to other industries. Auto. I got to tell you, these auto numbers from the CPI yesterday, they look really great, but they're not sustainable. We had new car prices up uh, 1% in one month, new vehicle prices up 10.1% year to date. A lot of people buy cars with car loans. Very few people buy cars cash deal. I mean, cars are $60,000. How many people are paying cars with all cash? They will not be able to afford for that car note, that car loan, with the rates going through the roof. And guess what happens? If you bought the car last year and the rate is variable, you're locked in and that rate is bringing you higher up. It's not a good situation. It's really not a good situation. And finally, the labor market. We talk about this a lot. The supermarket, the Walmart, the Target, how many people are at the checkout stand? Well, get ready. Because labor falls apart in a later recession. Labor falls apart in a later recession as more layoffs are announced because they got to cut the cost. Here's what you need to know. You need to prepare yourself accordingly. And you need to listen to the data. The reason why I'm so proud of you and I celebrate you again today is because you have been watching and listening to all this data really carefully attunely with me on this channel for the last few weeks, we knew that Wall Street had not embedded the risk into the markets of more interest rate spikes from the Federal Reserve each month, and that because they've not embedded those risks, the markets, the Dow Jones, the stocks, the NASDAQ, was going to crash, and it did. Today, as we go into a big, bold, beautiful evenings of September 14th, do you believe, yes or no, jump in the live chat, do you believe that Wall Street has embedded the risk of interest rate spikes through December? Yes or no? And if you say yes, I'm going to ask you, where's the proof? Because I don't see any evidence that Wall Street has embedded the risk into the markets of interest rate spikes past October. I just don't see it, and I really see major problems. That's why Credit Suisse says they're projecting year-to-date lows going lower and beyond. And this is a comment before the, this is a comment for the twelfth, the day before the markets crashed a thousand points. By the way, the markets are basically flat today; they did not rebound. Uh, you, know, you know, up twenty points—that's less than a half a percentage point. They were basically down six percent. Most stocks were down six percent in one day. I mean, that's just not good. Um, we also had Finch ratings uh, th that same day, the 12th, saying accelerated monetary tightening, tightening policy to reduce inflation and economic growth will likely 
continue to hurt consensus expectations. Absolutely. Uh, the this, Thursday will have the retail sales number. And then Thursday will also have the jobless claims number. Friday will have the Michigan consumer confidence number. You know it's not going to be that confident. <laughs> you know it's just not going to be that confident. What you need to understand is that the comments from the President of the United States were really not what we need right now. And it's, it's, it's two days in a row that the President is doing this. And we really don't need this. I understand that the president may be going out and talking about, let's say, tractor trailers or electric trucks, and that a news reporter just sort of grabs him and asks him a question, and he should not be the core of economic data. I mean, he has Janet Yellen for that. I understand that. But if he wants to avoid the question, defer to him, he can. Rather, what he's doing here is he's commenting about stuff in a way in which it doesn't look really good. It really doesn't look good because the inflation is here. And every time that he ignores the inflation, every time that he casts uh, the data away and delivers incorrect data, you have to wonder, does he know the data is incorrect? And is he just giving us wrong data to sugarcoat the situation? My opinion, he knows the data. And he's sugarcoating the situation. He knows the data and he's sugarcoating the data. And why am I going with that? Because she did this the day before the markets crash. She went out on the 12th and sugarcoated the situation for the markets again. And for him to say that Wall Street does not reflect the U.S. economy. Oh, boy. <laughs> Let me remind you. The number one largest donor to the Joe Biden presidential campaign was Wall Street. Wall Street gave more to Joe Biden's campaign for president than any segment of the U.S. population. And so for him to say Wall Street does not reflect the U.S. economy, it does reflect the U.S. economy. Uh, and, you know, the number that was released yesterday is not Wall Street. I mean, this is sort of jumped in my brain. This is why you watch these shows, because these are not tape, sh these are not um, scripted shows. I, I, uh, I come on camera with notes, but I think through the data with you when we interact. The Consumer Price Index is not Wall Street. The Consumer Price Index is how much the milk and eggs is in the supermarket in Wisconsin, how much the rent is in Nebraska how much the wages are in Florida, how much the gasoline is in Delaware. That's what the Consumer Price Index number is. And when he says, you know, I'm not really worried about Wall Street. They're not, they're not the American economy. You know. Finally, my last commentary. My last commentary today is that when you prepare for this economy and it's downward trend. You got to associate yourself around people who really put, I'm about to sneeze again. <laughs> See, uh, uh, fake narratives make me allergic. <laughs> I'm allergic to fake narrative. That was not a setup. That Yeah, let's see if I can survive the rest of the recording about sneezing. Uh, <laughs> this, I think I should start a, I should start a Twitch feed that calls, uh, watch me not sneeze for 15 hours on a live stream. <laughs> they have that stuff out there. Uh, I need you to really associate yourself around people that put data first and that do not put the analysis first. And that starts with people who do the right thing, that understand that where you look at the data, when you look at the data, and how you put that data first could impact your decisions on what you do with spending. People who are bragging about the cars that they bought uh, with 20% down payment and the rest is credit. Excuse me? You, you bought a car on credit 20% down? And are you aware of what the Federal Reserve is going to be doing for the rest of this year? Uh, people who are trying to sell their home and are not slashing the prices, thinking that the prices are sustaining themselves people who are going to the landlord and asking for the rent to be reduced. The landlord is not reducing the rent. It doesn't have to. And these swaths of the economy that are manifesting itself in the data is how we prepare ourselves accordingly. 
number one. Get as much stimulus as you can. Go around this video, become a member, Purple Hawk, Pearl Paracast, you know, VIP. Get these massive stimulus checks that are coming in three, five days. Get them right today. Number two, remove that debt. Any debt that you have, friends or family. Number three, if you're around people that have this debt, this variable debt, prepare yourself accordingly. Everyone has this different story, so I don't know how to record that specifically for you. But if you're around, whether you're employed by someone that has a lot of debt, whether you have a, f a daughter or, or a son that has a lot of debt, or whether you have a neighbor or a friend that has a lot of debt, prepare yourself accordingly because it's not going to look good as we enter into December. Get all these incredible sums of money. From the shores of Santa Monica, California, thank you for joining me. Join me next tonight on Evening's Highlight. Again, it's at 5 o'clock Pacific Terran Time. It's a major recording. Get all these incredible sums of money you deserve. Go around this video. Join the channel. Purple Hawk, Purple Power Cast, you know, VIP. Stay informed, stay focused, because that's where you go and how you stay ahead as part of the Purple Power community. Stay informed, stay focused, and stay ha, with Ally for more.